<clears throat> Good evening, lovely people of the Book of Face. I don't think I'm doing this on YouTube. I should have done, but anyway, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> so there we go. There's the first fail of the evening. Uh, welcome, welcome. It's the 23rd of November, 2023. It's half past six. I'm coming at you live from Yotas Matters HQ in that there, Yorkshire. I'm joined by the glorious Tom Stanhope. Stanhope or Stanhope? <laughs> Oh gosh! You'd st this is this is the hardest question we're going to tackle all evening. So it is. It, it has always been in my family, Stanhope, but but it is pronounced Stanhope by some people. And it well, depends. if you say it's Stanhope, then that's yes. how you say it is. Oh, well, that's like, true. Sure, surely. Um. Yeah. So um. So Tom Stanhope coming <laughs> at us. I I knew it was a myth. I thought it was Portsmouth, but it's Plymouth. Yes. 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 But anyway, think, it's Smith. Yeah. Down yeah. south, that there down south. Way down south. Way down south. <laughs> so um, I promised I would get Tom here. Uh, Chantelle was going to join us as well, but unfortunately she's very unwell. Yeah. Um, slash on her over, I'm not sure. Well, yeah. really <laughs> um, but either way, she's not here right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's just me and Tom tonight. Yes. Um, but I promised uh, people in my community, this is going into my Facebook group, um, into my professionals Facebook group and my um, parent Facebook group, mm -hmm. that we would have a chat about AI because Tom introduced me to, Tom and I have known each other for a good long while, probably four years. Yes. Tom introduced me to AI about, blah, I mean, six months ago, maybe, but like stuff that you've been doing, I've been like dipping my toe in for a few mm. months. And it blew my tiny mind. And so Tom and Chantel are like, we were just talking before we came on and Tom was, Tom was saying, and I was like, he's going to be like the Martin Lewis of AI. This is the way this is going to go. And Chantel's going to be like the Lorraine of AI, I guess. <laughs> um so but yeah it's like well let's just talk about it so yeah. i said that i would get you on and we would chat to parents about it because there's lots of things there's some myth busting to do but yeah. also just some reassuring to do and some like some tools to share with parents yeah. and carers because we know that it can make a difference so that's the very long way of saying hello tom nice to see you <laughs> hello heidi lovely to see you too <laughs> it's also worth mentioning that Tom and I are both like weavers and ramblers. So it will take like yes. you could watch this. We will get there. there. We will the get journey, there. The journey will be interesting. We can promise we will that. Get there in a beautifully ADHD way. <laughs> yeah. So so AI then, Tom. Yes. Like what well, I'm gonna ask you some like idiot okay. guide questions. And I know this is gonna be a good answer because I've heard you answer this before. <laughs> what is AI? And how do you know if it is AI or not? That is a really good question, and actually, I think that is the that is that that is a sort of a great place to start with this. So I'll start. Out, I'll I'll preframe the question. Oh, tell by, me who you are as well. Sorry, yeah. So I'll preframe the question because because what I'm not is a, a coder or a programmer. I come at AI from primarily the user. You know, I'm I'm a user of this first and foremost. I've I've not created AI systems yet, although that is something that Chantal and I are looking at doing as we as we as we go go forward. But what I am is um a, a techno optimist, I think. Um but my my career is that of a video maker. I am a video content creator. I've been in the world of 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 TV and video production since 2001. Um, I've seen a lot of technolo technological shifts over that time. Um, and what what I saw sort of three or four years ago was tools coming onto the market that were AI driven. So they were kind of, they had, um, uh, they, they fell under the broad sort of uh, banner of artificial intelligence um, tools. And they are things that help with the production process. So things that help with, um, with with kind of looking at footage, looking at sort of dealing with all, tidying audio up, all these things. And I, you know, I was having conversations with with, with Una, my wife, and we were we were talking about it and going, we can see that coming down the line, a set of tools and a suite of a suite of kind of technology that is ultimately going to replace me, or a lot of what I do. 
Which is and, scary as a creative, right? Yes. And I know yes. I've had this conversation with other creatives, and I know yeah. that a lot of the thing around the strikes in the US and the writer strikes was, mm, do we really want AI? Yeah. Do we really want robots coming over here taking our jobs? Yes. Um, <laughs> And your response to that was not yeah. to be like, I'm going to push back like mad and I'm yeah. going to make sure no one in my life ever uses AI ever. Your response yeah. was, well, if it's coming, I'm going to be someone who knows how to use it because my competitors are going to be using it yeah. and I'm going to find a way to use it ethically and yes. for the good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think I think also my attitude is sort of whilst I am optimistic about technology I think I'm also a realist and you know government is is incapable of moving fast enough to legislate for the use of this stuff so it's coming down the line whether we like it or not big companies who are making money out of this aren't going to stop with this so this is it is already integrated and woven into our lives in ways that is very it's going to be very very difficult to unpick yeah. and and so yes it is absolutely that I wanted to be I wanted to be using this in a way that supported my creativity rather than diminished it. I don't know what I don't ever want to be doing. What I never advocate is for us to be giving up our sort of human voice to this no. stuff. It's a tool, right? It's, yeah, it's exactly. A, it's you a, don't, a, yeah. a time saving, yes. boon saving, capacity yeah. saving tool. Yeah. It's not to do your job. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, it's, it is, it's an incredibly sophisticated job. So that's so I so I come at the technology from a perspective of somebody who's looking at it as something where I go, mm, I can see what you're about. I'm not going to be freaked out by it. I'm going to make sure I, I understand how to use that and how to use that to the best of my ability. And so that's how I came to it. And so so when Chat GPT came into sort of general release, it's something that had been sort of very much on my radar. Um, you know, with with all the sort of develop watching the developments of OpenAI and and kind of uh the, the sort of that company that had inevitably grown out of a, an idea of elon <laughs> your friend of mine elon musk is oh, the elon. Uh, yes <laughs> crazy, crazy man um he uh you know open ai sort of came from his you know sort of so partly from some seed funding that he provided um Let's not give him all the credit, though, right? No, like, oh, no, when well, no, I was going to say, throw money at stuff. Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of big brands have been working on this. And, and we have a situation where we have this thing at the centre of a lot of this. And I think probably the most commonly understood bit of, of AI driven um, technology is ChatGPT. ChatGPT is what is called generative AI. And basically, mm -hmm. it is the ultimate end point or at least a, ro a, a very very significant stop on the ultimate end point of artificial general intelligence which is basically a, a, a fully functioning um sort of uh, consciousness but we're, we're away off that some people think that will never happen some people think we're very very close to it and actually i read something in the paper today about about the fact that you know OpenAI have made significant strides towards that, and that's possibly something. One of the things that have, that's been in the mix with all the all the shenanigans that's been going on over there uh, over the last the last few days. But we have this thing They're being sacked and then reinstated, and then oh God, yeah, sort of all the workforce yeah. threatening to quit. And so it's been fascinating. But you know, in, but that you know, that's all interesting corporate politics, but it doesn't affect us as users really. So we have this tool at our disposal, generative a generative AI tool, and what it is. Um, uh, the, the GPT um, uh, is is kind of um, it's called generative pre -tra I have to always remind myself the generative pre trained transformers, which sounds like the least popular transformers um, TV series that was on when we were kids. Um, no so, problem with me, is it? <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So, so Chat GPT is a generative pre trained transformer. So, what this sort of does in very very basic terms uh translated by someone who is not a coder we have a massive database of information and this data has come from a million billion interactions that we've ever had because you know google microsoft all these big tech companies hoover up data and the 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 fantastic thing about all this data is that it can be used to to train uh, ai models and so there's this huge pool of data and then you've got this thing that sits between the human and the data which is this kind of artificial intelligence um 
machine learning kind of uh, interface. Inter interface, that's the word I'm looking for. And it allows us to ask questions of this huge data pool and to have something make sense of it. So we can go to, to chat GPT and say, and ask it any question we fancy within a, within a certain amount of parameters. And chat GPT will, will take your question and it will turn it into something that it can then inquire from that massive pool of data, get an answer back, and then turn around back to the human and go, I've got stuff for you. And it, you can engage in a conversation. It's it's sort of a way of engaging in a conversation with a very, very, very large um, uh, data, sort of pool of data. And so that makes a very, very exciting thing sound incredibly boring. And it's um, it's it's kind of, but that's essentially what it is. But it, it allows us to, in, in a, if you imagine, sort of think back to, to when sort of Google first became available as a thing, and we, we realized that we were able to ask any question that popped into our mind at any time of the day and, and get an answer from it. Ask from Jeeves a, for those. Yeah, exactly. Right, exactly. Ask Jeeves. Going to Lycos or whatever, it, you know, whatever your search engine of choice was. It feels like we're at that point again, where we have the where we have this next step in in kind of um, in in sort of information gathering. But now what we've got is a is a tool that will present data and information back to us in a in a really organised way, in a way that is potent, can can do all sorts of astonishing things. And it's yeah. this it's this point that we're at now. So what it doesn't. Um, uh, so can we teach Claude and the CFA, so the CFA in case I'm having to do... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I this is... freaking love Claude. I introduced Claude to my community, I think it was yesterday, and a couple of people have run with it. <laughs> Ruth yeah. is one of them. <laughs> this, this, this is it. It's, you know, and and I, I think it's that moment when you, if you haven't used this stuff before, you go on so there. You say it's Children and Families Act, by the way, in case yes, you're wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's um, it, it is uh, um, I, I think we're going to find. I mean, this is a really interesting point. I think we're going to find these tools integrating into government and and sort of and without government doubt. processes. Without doubt. And the thing is, as well, is that yeah. the thing that I think one of the things about the fear of AI is that people mm. are thinking, oh, it's this new thing, and we, and it isn't regulated, although. Chat GPT and Claude and some of the other tools that we're going to mention probably, yeah. they have to work within the law in the country that they're operating yeah. under. So they are still subject to GDPR, yes. you know, and the users are still subject to GDPR. Mm. GDPR. So it's not completely unregulated. It's just no. there's no specific, and that and that kind of like the the big thing they had at Bletchley Park when they're all sitting around being very terrified about what it could do. <laughs> really, the main reason the governments are terrified mm. is because they know that probably users are ahead of them in terms of using AI, and Absolutely. they don't want the common unwashed to yes. be more up to speed on this mm. technology than they are. Um, yeah, and and that is that is I mean that's ever been the case with government and science because yeah. most MPs are thick as mint so it's kind of it's you know when it comes to science it's kind of you know they they don't they don't understand it and to be and to be fair to them why you know why should they there's they've no, got a million job. yeah exactly job so, is to not answer questions in big yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. um so um so we have we have this I mean, and actually one of the things i think one of the where what the fear comes from is that we've 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 been well trained by science fiction over the last over the last sort of seventy years to to kind of um, to fear machines that think for themselves, and yeah. we are we are on this cusp of that being a practical everyday reality. And as people who've grown up with you know with with terminator and dune and whatever you know in sort of lodged in war some, games exactly 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 in, in some part of our in some part of our psyche you know we you know 2001 a space odyssey you know i don't we've we've all got these we've all got these bits of of sort of pop culture that that inform how we think about and to be honest they it's very useful because actually if you do have this kind of you you have to realistically think about these things when you're effectively creating something totally new and don't know where it'll go so 
but what I want to be very clear is that ChatGPT is not that. ChatGPT yeah. is not general artificial intelligence. <clears throat> yeah. Artificial general intelligence. It is. It is very good at doing a certain amount of things. But what it is not, it is not going to do make creative leaps of, of fancy. It is going to take a whole bunch of information and it is it is an unimaginably vast pool of information that stuff that we're drawing stuff from which is why it can do an awfully good impression of being a, a real living thing and i think that's what what we what we sometimes get a bit freaked out by is that it gives the impression of being intelligent but in fact it's just a very 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 clever database yeah yeah and, and i think the other thing as well is that the thing that i mean there are a couple of things that i really like about like i say i'm I, I, I I use Claude. I used Claude mm. to write two complaint letters yesterday, which yeah. took me Amazing. less than an hour, and they would have taken me three days usually. Yeah. Um, I've used Claude to do all kinds of things for me in that respect. I've used it for things like like Claudia is saying, will it come up with smart targets and provisions? The thing is, <clears throat> is there is the the kind of the watch out. I guess is that to remember that it isn't a real person. Yeah, it's only as good as the data it has access to yes. it will only be as accurate as you require it and request it to be yes so you need to really know what you're asking it for so for things like a complaint letter upload the complaints policy from the local council give it a timeline ask it to throw out a complaint yeah and then go through and use that as your starting point to flesh that out that's not a big thing but if no. you just sit and say write me a complaint because my local authority have let down my kid you will get all kinds of guff back in the response. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. It does like to make shit up. It like does. It make yeah. shit up, but it's just going off what you've asked it, and it's yeah. got a massive data pool. So yeah. you have got to be and, – and the thing I really like about it and the thing that you've taught me about it, because uh, Tom has a mastermind that I'm part of, like an AI mastermind, which makes me feel very important. Um, <laughs> and in there, Tom and Chantelle have got this like bank of like things like prompts for helping you with things like considering advanced marketing planning and uh, for filmmakers, there's like a how do you make a kit list for a shoot and that, stuff like that. It's all very like personal. Whatever ideas. your mind can conceive of. We yeah. Can... Like, yes. <clears throat> but what I really like about it is that you can be super specific with it. Yeah. And you can keep fine tuning, fine tuning, mm -hmm. fine tuning, fine tuning. And um, for... And I think I said to you, I like that there's something that works as fast as my brain, but faster than my fingers. Yes. <laughs> this is exactly it for me as well. The frustration has always been for me, uh, uh, a sort of inattentive ADHD um, kind of brain that I have. Um, it, my brain is working at a million miles an hour and the frustration that this fit that this sort of addresses is exactly as you say the ability to go i want to create a, a new a good example is this week i was like i've just i'm i'm sort of formalizing another another sort of the design of and web design for another company i'm i'm, I'm sort of starting up which is sort of around podcasting and i was like okay i want to write a, a web brief and so i was like got it to do a web brief for me but i, I used all this other information and it took me an hour to do work that would have taken my very easily bored brain your executive failing weeks to do. <laughs> it yeah. just gets gets me started and once the ball is rolling it just kind of pours out mm -hmm. and and i'm able to sort of inquire and you know the one thing i have to be careful of is that i don't sort of go you know opening up a million tabs and go sort of spiraling off into you know into other other kind of nooks and crannies yeah, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. So, so let's yeah. talk let's talk about some of the tools because yes. there are, I think there are four tools yes. that I think are potentially really yeah. handy for parents and carers. Yeah. Um Claude we've touched on briefly. Yeah. Yes. So Claude I think was my first like oh this yeah. is cracking. Yeah. Um <clears throat> can you give us top line of what Claude does? Well, it, so Claude is essentially it is a generative AI um, um, in a in a similar way to ChatGPT, but it is um, it's by a different company. So the company that underpins it is Anthropic. Anthropic are um, are backed now as of like a few weeks ago now backed 
by Amazon. So um, Claude is Claude has a lovely interface. First of all, should it's I share? Should very I share personable. Yeah. 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 Can you share your screen? Yes, me... I can indeed. So here we are. Here's Claude. Let me uh, put it on here. Let me here. Go. here we go. Welcome back, Tom. So friendly, hello. isn't he? Yes, it's a very. Uh, <laughs> um, so you know, if we were to say um, hello. You know, I th whilst this is just a fancy database, I always try to be polite. He's um, being polite to his assistive tech because he's yes. scared that if it ever becomes sentient, they'll come yeah, for him. He'll remember me. Going, you, you were really mean to him. No, I wasn't. Check the records, actually. I think <laughs> you find polite. I was very polite. <laughs> I keep uh, receipts. Yes, yes. <laughs> if only that were true. Um, <laughs> hello. Uh, please uh, tell me... Um, Tell me, um, oh, get, I don't know. I'm, trying to, I'm now trying to think of something off the top of my head and can't uh, can't think of. Um, uh, Please help me um, break down yes. what I need to do uh, to start to think about um, applying for an EHCP. So. See what it gives us because it's a global database as well so sometimes yes. like what i would actually do in this case is i would upload the same code of practice yeah. as an yeah. attachment but let's just see what it gives us so that so that that was the point i was i was going to sort of quickly make so actually the the thing that the thing about claude about claude which is which is great is that you can upload so this is the free version of claude. i do i don't use the paid version of claude i know chantal does I um yeah and uh you can add files so pdfs whatever you know whatever sort of way your, your information is 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 there you can you can kind of upload documents and then you can use claude and this is how i mostly use it i use it to sort of analyze and dissect that document mm -hmm. so you can you can sort of um so, so a good example of this is a, a few weeks ago i was working with them with the client um she wanted to map out her live video content for her business she'd written a book so we took the we took the um the book manuscript dropped it in there and and i said right give me 50 lives off the back of the book and three lead magnets and it sort of pumped out this list and then we took that and we took that information over to chat gpt and did some more work on it over there but mm -hmm. it's that ability to to inquire um and reason out the, the content of something so i suspect this will not this will give us an answer but as Heidi says we would ideally want to be augmenting this search on this question on claude by adding in as much information about about applying for an ehcp as we possibly could so let's just click one of the things that i haven't done yet that i'm that i think would be really helpful is to use for people who are watching along while it's generating hmm. is maybe to use this for, with something like the noddy guide so the noddy guide is the 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 book of all case law relating hmm. to special educational needs so you could basically upload the noddy guide and say what does case law say about this thing and it will just search yeah. the document for you yeah. so yeah it's like an advanced search tool i can't actually see what that says because i'm here is a step-by-step -step challenge what you need to do to start the process of applying for education health and care plan in the uk gather information good start collect reports <laughs> contact your child's school seek professional assessments talk to other professionals look into mediation complete the application submit the application so so it feels like what is provided you know i don't you know this isn't something this, although this is something that i'm probably going to have to be navigating relatively soon anyway that's all right you've got me you'll be fine yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> so um um uh so this is so i look at this i think that sounds like a yeah, that, that's kind of that's an interesting breakdown but but what i want to just sort of get into a little bit is is this is think of this as a conversation so yeah. you go thanks <laughs> thank you thanks um could you expand on point one Sure, I'm happy to expand on gathering yes. information. And yes. then it tells you what kind of information you might want to gather. Yeah. And so, so yeah, what I find it's really useful for is 
is taking things I don't understand and helping me get to a point where I do understand them. So, and, and actually it will do, it will do anything you want with this. So, you know, if, if I've, if I've been asked a difficult physics question by my son, um, which is very likely because most physics questions are difficult <laughs> for me, um, I can go and ask and say, explain this idea to me as though I were nine. Yeah. And, and as long as he doesn't copy and paste that and stick it in his coursework. No, you know, but, uh, you know it, if he, if he's if his teacher's asking him what is time, then I think probably we've got, we, you know, we, we'll. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's about, yeah. I like yeah. to think of it as like it's Claude. I like to think yeah. of it as kind of like Google on crack. Yeah. Like it just, yeah. It's just quicker and more and tells you longer stories yeah. than what you and it's get. approachable it's it feels i think actually the the biggest thing about it is is it feels a bit more approachable because if we go over to chat gpt yeah let's look at chat gpt so they, i don't just, like the use the oh, interface as much on chat gpt i find it a little bit it scares me a bit it looks it's very masculine um, well yeah it, it you can tell <laughs> it's come from an academic background can't you actually i think it yeah. sort of feels it feels so so, so ChatGPT does um, uh, now does a number of things, um, which so this is this is just to be clear. This is the professional. This is the paid for version of ChatGPT, um, but if we compare it to Claude, Claude is all it's all very sort of minimal and friendly and and kind of is very much focused on 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 sort of one kind of one. Um, one point of reference whereas we go into chat gpt and we can see that it's it's There's a bit more yes, there, it? but it yeah. can generate images for you so <laughs> in the mastermind last night i was hosting a call and i said i said uh turn this man into a 19th century steamliner captain <laughs> and there is an issue for me so i have used image generation yes um and I've used it for like for one piece that is public facing, which is my AI uh, yeah. thing that I'm doing in the new year. There is an issue I feel with creative control and yes. intellectual property with image use, right? So this is the one where it is a bit murky, I yeah. think, because this AI is generated based on artists' artwork, basically. Yes. So it is really fun, but yeah. I would I would say unless you're in the realm of AI and you're doing it as like a look what AI could do, yeah. for God's sake, don't start using AI to generate all your artwork. No. Because first of all, it looks like it's AI generated, but secondly, it's a little bit questionable, right? Yes. So, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I'm with you 100% on that. So I think this is, this is where we get into the really, the really kind of, naughty question i think if there's going to be any legal challenges it will be this, this. it yeah. will be this because because there are a whole bunch of artists who are rightfully very cross about the fact that they've sort of had their their work used as a reference guide and so if i if i if i was to put the in in here um you know create an image uh, create an image of um uh oh crikey what we're going to go for of of um Paddington Bear uh, in the style of Vincent van Gogh. G O G H. No. Will it not oh. let you? Well, no. It's 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 um. Uh, but this, so this is this is really interesting. So Chat GPT is already saying the bear will not be being very specific the bear will not be paddington bear because mm -hmm. it, can't, it can't play around with with kind of copyrighted you know to, but it will be a unique character wearing a but instead it will be a unique character wearing a he's like that's you know, paddington that's <laughs> exactly so this is where it gets tricky and it's, it, murky. it's yeah because yeah. it's like clearly you'd have to be daft not to think that that was paddington bear so clearly it knows what Paddington Bear is because it's got all the reference materials and yeah. all the information to sort of to, to do that. And so it knows, it understands the artistic style. It understands what Paddington Bear is and it can remix them. So there yeah. is there is this big kind of problem that it's very difficult to sort of unpick. I mean, I've used 
to but you know what i think this is so fun for is if you've got a child or young person who is a very visual person and has a math mad mad imagination yeah. they can use chat gpt to make pictures of practically anything yes um, and you can have real fun with it and like i think that as a tool for fun and for learning it's it's really yes. valuable and i, I used it th this week because um a professional really peed me off so i described what that professional looked like and asked chat gpt to make me a picture of them reading an email from me with steam coming out of their ears <laughs> and then um, oh my god it, if my my anxiety around it evaporated immediately and i laughed for about 25 that's a great minutes. idea i love that so, like, cool. for me it was a really good regulation tool in that moment just to have, that's a great idea just to yeah. have chat gpt make a cruel picture yeah. for me <laughs> So oh, there we go. We've got uh, Paddington Bear in the style of Aronimus Bosch now. Nice. Um, so can, you do, can you tell you what my favourite style is in ChatGPT? Is um, uh, oh, what is his name? Um, Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, oh, Wes Anderson. So ask for it in a Wes Anderson style, and you get yeah. gorgeous things. Well, this uh, now this so this is really interesting. Again, we've got living art. We've got sort of living artists. So now in the style it may well straight because i'm what i'm trying to do is find, find well, it will sometimes just say no i won't do that no i won't do that you won't you won't pull me into your evil game yes yes but but so 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 this is um uh yeah so this is sort of the fun end of chat gpt but it's yeah. so this is this is using a um a, an image creation model called um dally um and you know it's a lot of fun but like as you say Heidi I would you know use it use it sort of sparingly I would say um you know, Do you know I think it could be really good for though if you um if you wanted to brief a designer yeah. and you wanted to give them some reference points it could be good for that you could say oh I want a picture of <laughs> it's amazing I want a picture of um you know I did one recently. I want a picture of someone climbing a big pile of paperwork in this yeah. kind of feel and this kind of style. And I gave that to Theo and then he drew it based yeah. off that reference point. So, you know, it wasn't a copy. It was like a yeah. kind of an inspiration point. That was, that was really cool. Uh, Helen wants to know if it makes, uh, if it makes voodoo dolls. I don't think so, Helen, but I mean, like, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sure, I'm sure. Well, I, it, it will. So I, I'm, I use it for uh, what I, what I'm using it for is helping with, um, uh, creating um let's see if i could find it um oh, what's the word i'm looking for? um oh my god my brain uh it's almost like your adhd or something <laughs> it's just <laughs> massive evasion. um oh, for Christ, it, when you make when you're Sorry. making films, uh, reference when sort of making films. When I'm Do you mean films, shot lists? Shot, shot, turning shot lists into oh, what's the bloody word? Oh my god! Um, it's the it's the the images you turn your, your storyboards. Uh, Storyboards. I'll just I, keep saying words until sound. Thank you. Right. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so, I, um, story. I find it useful for creating storyboards, so I can describe a shot and it will turn it into a visual representation. Of that so, so nice. yeah. So, you can so give the, that to your AD or whoever, yeah, and then exactly. they can use that as a reference. Yeah, exactly. I so, I, so I can. I, that's one of the ways that I use it. But but you can see the difference between ChatGPT and 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 Claude Claude. Is, is 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 somewhat different. But um, it, one of the things that we get um, we get somewhat um, hung up on is prompt engineering. And and prompt engineering is 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 a phrase you may well hear, particularly in reference to ChatGPT. That's one of the things that that sort of that gets talked about an awful lot and and if you hear the phrase prompt engineering all it is 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 how we talk to these these systems now they are getting better and better and better all the time so they you know as more people use it as well the better it has an understanding of how of how to sort of interact so one of the things that i you know i like to i like to do and encourage people to do is to sort of start the conversation if you are you know if you're for example sort of having a particular discussion so it could be you know act as a in this case a video marketing expert so if you're having a conversation about a particular topic ask chat gp 
to to act in a particular way but also you can sort of um you can also do things like so for this conversation act as a video marketing expert do you understand and it tells you what it understands by that yeah. as well doesn't yeah. it so so you can yeah. check yeah yes. um so please, so you can do, please build out a, a ideal, an ideal structure for a live video broadcast. Just, as, I mean, this is, this is just a random example. But yeah. So if you, if you frame the conversation you're going to have with these platforms, and actually this works with, with Claude as well, it will then, um, um, so so it will it will help with a whole bunch of um of kind of specific tasks so yeah. you can if you if you think about the tool from the perspective of what you want from it and then say please act as a whatever it is expert then give your you know give it your question or give it the task you want it to do it will it will be much more focused on that as a as a as a kind of a, as a, as a sort of an output goal yeah and you can do things like what i found it's i find it's helen saying it can give us uh, like social scripts mm. <laughs> but what i do it um what i use it for is i if i'm writing an email i'll sometimes i'll have written the email and i'll put it in claude claude is my pre preference for like just mm -hmm. down and dirty stuff yeah and i'll say claude check the tone on this is it polite yeah. but professional yeah. And it'll just add a, I hope you're doing well and kind regards at the end. So it's not just me going, yo, send me this paperwork, bitch. You know, so it's, <laughs> but it's good for that kind of stuff. And yeah. like when you're trying to get the tone right on, you know, emails to caseworkers and, you know, yeah. and you can also, I experimented with it today, you can ask it to be more passive aggressive and it does a beautiful nice. job. Or so, less <laughs> As Chantal, if Chantal was here, Chantal she'd tell like us, less wanky, doesn't she? Yes, yes, that is a remarkably <laughs> useful prompt, uh, which is, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so we'll talk about a couple more in a minute. I'm yeah. conscious of time, but at uh, least Marie's saying, what do you get from Claude that you don't get from ChatGPT? It's more about what they do, isn't it? Because yeah. Claude had, things are moving so quick, aren't they? Claude had documents. Yes. Then ChatGPT had documents. Yes. They both have capacity to search websites now. I think is that yes. right? Yes. Yes. So, so you can. So you can. Uh, does Claude? Um, I think. It, um, can hang on. We'll ask. Can you? Can you access the insights? No. You're on the free version, aren't you? I'm on the free version. So, the so the free version does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. You can ask it to look through websites. Yes. Um, um, and isn't one of them? One of them does use sheets now as well, don't they? Well, yeah. So, so Claude int can integrate into sheets, but um, uh, so what you can do with so you can also dump sort of spreadsheets into into Chat GPT, but also you can ask. So please, uh, please present this in a uh, spreadsheet format nice so you can you can get it to um sort of format things up for you as well and it will it will do an awful lot of as you'd expect it's very good at, in, at sort of um uh inquiring although yeah here we go oh it's not doing it oh no yes it is doing it there we go yeah so there we go. Yeah. Um, so I think Lisa, the, the question about what you know, what do you get from one or the other? It, it's it's sort of getting almost to a point where they're they're both they're they're sort of both they're doing, competing with uh, each other, yeah, actually, exactly. aren't they, at the moment? Yeah, so are. I had a thing where I was using Claude for most things, and then Chat GPT changed something, and I was like, oh, mm. oh. I might have to cancel my Claude subscription. Yes. And then Claude did something else. I was like, oh, okay. It's like being fought over by jealous lovers because they keep throwing stuff at you. It's quite nice because you can use yeah. it. Well, 
you know exactly and, we, and i think that's a really good reminder of where we are in, in the in the sort of the market as, with, with all this stuff anyway because it is just the pace of it is just yeah. breakneck right. and and one of the one of the sort of if we can sort of take it a st sort of step to the side of this one of the things i know we've talked about a lot is is using claude and chat gpt to make sense of of kind of conversations consultations and one of the ways we do that is by using oh no using otter so otter is yeah, a, so sure otter. yeah otter is an ai subscription tool and i i use otter to um to generate automatically generate um meeting notes yeah same. and then um and then i take those meeting notes download them as a as a as a as a you know as a text file and then i will take that text file and put it into chat gpt or claude and ask questions of course say please you know things like please summarize this meeting yeah let you me know what the main in, points. In otter, you can mm. integrate otter so that otter automatically records all your zoom yeah. calls yeah so that even if you forget to press record you've got a transcript of the audio mm. yeah um you can tell it who's speaking so that it gives you a decent transcript. It still needs checking. Yeah. And it can be a bit, it can be interesting if you're using terminology that isn't common terminology. But also it can you can ask it, you can ask within Otter, tell me what the action points were from this meeting, and it will tell you what you agreed to do. Yeah. So while you're speaking to somebody, like I find it really handy because I forget what I've told people I'll do, but I'll I'll literally say, I'm just going to tell myself what to do. Heidi, make sure you send an email with this, 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 and this on it. And then when I ask it afterwards, it says, you said you'd do this, this, and this. Like, after that, that's my problem that I don't do it. But at least Otter has told me I said I would, you know. But um, I also think, you see, you can see it's it's live transcribing now. So it's, and it corrects itself as it's going along. So whereas I often don't finish sentences, it won't do that in the transcript. It will fill in the gaps so that it yes. reads more fluently. Yeah. which I really like. And I've used Otter in this way when I've been writing as well. So rather than using standard transcription so, so, um, software, I find that Otter is a little bit more uh, responsive to yeah. audio input because it is an audio input platform. Um, Helen's asking, can you use voice instead of typing? You can on ChatGPT, can't you? Although yes, so, like so, the, the app is, so the app is particularly good. Let me just... Uh, let me just Oh, hang on, I'll just stop sharing the screen for for a second. Um, oh no, hang on. If you remove if you remove Otter from the screen, so this yeah. is this is Chat GPT. The app on here is is um, that's fun for making images late night in bed when you can't sleep. Yeah. So the app is very very. Um, so I use I so if I'm if I'm driving in the car and I want to um, to sort of get an idea down on paper, I will use this. It's it's brilliant because not only is the um, is the the voice uh, trans transcription really accurate, as you'll hear in a second, the responding voice is creepily human. So, yeah, it is. Um, let's let's. Uh, Have you so had it when it's done it in Welsh for you yet? Yes, oh, we randomly went Mine, Welsh. Like, Mine keeps jumping into Welsh. I don't know why. No, so, Chat GPT, um, could you give me a uh, a cocktail idea involving absinthe, gravy, and vermouth. So we're going to see what it's called. Uh, absolutely. Let's create a unique cocktail with those ingredients. How about an absinthe gravy surprise? Complexity of absinthe with the savory gravy. The, so, yeah, so there we have the the. The uh, the complexity of absinthe with the savoury richness of gravy in a cocktail, <laughs> I I'm, I'm sold. That is yeah, sign yeah. me up. I am. So, um, <laughs> you also, can have yours replies with a male voice, and mine replies with a female voice. Well, I I, I, to, I choose I I I, I, I flit between them, you know. So so um yeah. I. Um, to, yeah, it is freak, isn't it? <laughs> just... Well, sometimes I don't know if it's my accent, but sometimes Chat GPT thinks I'm speaking in Welsh and then replies <laughs> to me in Welsh. <laughs> but then if you say to it, "No, I was speaking English," it goes back, changed what you said, puts it in English, and then replies in English, which is yeah. pretty clever. Is. Um, so yeah, Chat GPT, Otter yes. for audio transcription, recording yes. meetings on the fly, or with 
full permission and the knowledge yeah. of the people in the meeting. Um, yes. You can record Zooms and you can record straight into it. You can't currently use voice integration on Claude, I don't think. I don't think you can. Um, no app for Claude, is there? It's 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 laptop based. Or if yes, is, so I imagine that will be... It'll that be next, will be, won't it? Yeah. The other one, the last one, are you all right for time? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Sure? Okay. The last one, which I think is probably the one that I think is the most fun and the most kind of applicable to yes. <laughs> neurodivergent people's everyday life is yeah. Goblin, right? Yes. Yes. Do you use Goblin? I do. I've, I've, got, I've got the app and um, I, I do like it. It's, it's a really pared down AI with a really precise focus yeah and, I'm gonna say, let's answer um, this question sorry yeah. yes otter ai can work on the same screen as a meeting yes you basically have two tabs open on your computer yeah um and it will pull it straight across yeah um sorry does otter do a team recording i don't know if you can i haven't tried to integrate it with teams i um, would imagine that it probably does i would be yeah. i'd be surprised um, on zoom it shows up it shows up as another person like it says heidi's otter ai assistant and if people go what's that i go it's just my transcription software don't make a fuss yeah no so teams <laughs> teams and otter yeah you can put yeah, it does. Into, okay yeah. cool so you integrate it with teams amazing um oh look there i am <laughs> uh so yeah goblin yes so you can see goblin.tools it is really um it really pared down so you've got magic to do so this is a really i find this really useful so i love goblin basically if i've got a complicated set of, of 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 things i need to do i can dump all the information into here and and so and also i can record it so let's oh, come on oh. no having a moment having a moment there we go there we go so let's try that again breaking Hello, things down so you don't sorry <laughs> could you help me break down the following morning into a list of tasks i need to drop my kids off at school i've got a meeting i've got to then fill the car up i've got to then do some cooking i've got to uh then have a meeting with a client how can I break all this down into something that I can manage? And, and then I can... you set the spice level. Yes. I mean, if I... built for ADHD. Yes. So the spice level is based on how difficult you find the task. So if you make it five spices, it's like, oh, yeah, the spice <laughs> oh, yeah. you make it. Like mine are always five. Yeah. <laughs> then Great. it gives and you it in the detail. So there we go. It has turned it into a checklist. So we can then. <laughs> Helen says, I asked Goblin how to win against the LA and it came up with some brilliant answers. Love that. <laughs> Love it. So, yeah, so you can take your tool, you take, here we are, um, and it will. Um, So request assistance in breaking down first, first of all, drop the kids. So you would, you know, obviously this is just like me mucking about with something. Um, and then you would get in and basically follow the prompts. Yeah. To, to, to break the task down more and more in a more granular way. And that's just, you know, probably. I asked it, um, I told it I was moving house in four months time and I needed to reduce the clutter in my house by 50%. I didn't want to work in more than 30 minute bursts. Mm. I had three bedrooms, a bathroom, a kitchen, a living room. Give me some instructions. And it did. Amazing. So it yeah. basically said, you know, in the bedroom, it said, start with one drawer. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was brilliant. It's yeah. absolutely excellent. Uh, yeah, and it's 99p, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, Colin. so, um, um, Matt formalizer. So this one, this one is useful. So basically, you can take, um, you can take, uh, say, for example, you are wanting to send an email and it is maybe being written in haste slash anger or both. <laughs> you can take it and put it into the formalizer and it will turn your um, turn your spicy thoughts into. <laughs> <laughs> you one you're typically yes, yeah, yes. So 
uh, spice the thoughts into classy ones, or vice versa, which is a, which is great. So I, I love I, that it says turn yes. the spicy thoughts into classy ones. Yes. Can you write like uh, piss off you bunch of gits and then ask it to formalize yes. it? Oh, you. I bet it'll just be like I can't you I can't deal with these obscenities. Sometimes it gets a bit tone police. <laughs> More professional, convert. I kindly request everyone to vacate the premises. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, so the judge is useful. This is so so oh, this, this is, is this, a good yeah, tool. Yeah, yeah. And actually one that's really, really handy, I think, for for kind of so my my wife finds this one particularly useful. Um Take the text. So if somebody has sent you uh, an email, drop it in there, and it will tell you the 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 kind of the the tone of the communication. Um, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I've got an email I can put in here. Um, I have got one, but you, I can't anonymize it quickly. Oh, well, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. So, <laughs> I've got so, many, go, many, go many. On, yes, Goblin Tools is free on on the sort of desktop. So 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 yeah. you know, have a have a play about with that with with your this own. This is a good uh, one for if you think that someone's being a a, a git yeah. and you're not sure if you're being a bit like sensitive because yeah. it'll be like oh no they're being a total git like, yes. yeah. <laughs> and you'll be like I knew it yes <laughs> um, the well, estimate, but... I find this particularly useful so um, one of the things I'm not great at is, is sort of estimating how long jobs <laughs> certain jobs will take and I never have been so no, um, you, know, you go you know, I could dump that list of activities in. Um, so I need this. Let's see. Oh. Oh, we didn't like that, did it? <laughs> it didn't like that. Okay. Anyway, so so what it does is it um as per my previous, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you yeah. can put something, you can put something in here like um, you know, deep clean a three-bedroom house. Um, which I think would I mean I can't even begin to no. ever imagine wanting to do that, but it will tell you three to four hours. That is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but you've only got two levels of spice, that's yes. why. If you make it five levels of spice, what Four you it, yeah. still, yeah, that we're yeah. getting there, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so but it's good for things like um uh like writing words, like if you say I need to write a thousand word blog post, mm. it's good for things like that, like being yes. able to give you an idea of how long things will take. Yes, yeah. How long will writing a thousand word blog post. Yeah, Lisa says, I always think everything will take 10 to 30 yeah. minutes. Same. Yeah. Ditto. Yeah. <laughs> Estimate. <Right. laughs> this will take roughly... And when you do the, when you do the to-do mm -hmm. list, you can also, there's an estimator button on the to-do list, so you can click that through and it'll show you how much, how long each step should take mm -hmm. you as well. Um, yeah. I think I've broken it. it. <laughs> I've broken it. I've broken <laughs> it. Yeah, compiler. Um, basically, this is sort of this. This is kind of all a useful uh, step before the magic to do because you can just take all your your random thoughts and turn them into a a, a list of, of of kind of things that are a bit more organisable. Put some and, other headers and stuff as well for you, doesn't it? If you need. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then chef is. Chef. Yes. It's the best tool. It's the Oof. best tool. Um, <laughs> I you can tell it what you've got in your cupboard, and it'll give yes. you like any recipe. Yeah, and actually, um, ChatGPT is very good as that. Good at that as well. I'm because I'm I've I've re it's really annoyingly I've recently seen I recently seem to have developed a, a the starts the developed a wheat allergy, so um, I am having to re readdress my entire eating habits which is very unfair because oh. i do like bread quite yeah. a lot um so uh i've used chat gpt and and goblin tools to to help me kind of get over my wheat addiction <laughs> so, yeah yeah um i just think it's i think 
I've done this before when like, you know, when you haven't been shopping and you're just like, I've got mm. like mince, gnocchi, yeah. half an onion, a mushroom and a stock cube. And like, yes. I know I could probably toggle something together, but then it will give you the recipe and it usually ask it for it step by step as well. Yes. So you can literally just follow it, um, which I really like. Yeah. Um, and if yeah. you don't put anything in it, it makes suggestions for takeaway, which I really like. <laughs> if you just click, I think it's, I think if you, I don't know if it's on this one or if it's just on the app. Pepperoni pizza type yeah. delivery. It's I'm always sold. pepperoni pizza. <laughs> so, yeah, if you've got nothing in, just tells yeah. you what to order in. Which yes. <laughs> but I also think that this, again, is a brilliant tool to give to your kids. Yeah. In terms of helping them to break down tasks, mm. you know, manage things, to-do lists, kit lists for school, um, you know, like, don't forget that kind of thing. How long will things take me? You know, even putting things in during the day, pieces of homework, you know, if it's on, if it's on um, Goblin, you can, it's on your phone, isn't it? You know, and it's like all in one place, but I think it's brilliant. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen next? With oh, it? my God. Well, okay. So this, this, is where get, this is where we get into, I think we're going to go through a period of time of, of rapid. So I think in terms of general adoption of, uh, adoption of, of kind of general, uh, of, um, of kind of GPT style um, generative AI, we're going to see, we, it still feels like we're at the stage where we're all just looking at and going, no way. That's amazing. Incredible. So give it two or three years and it'll just be, it'll be woven into everyday yeah, life. Yeah, we won't even think twice. Yeah. I, I think, I think actually this is where a lot of the sci-fi stuff does become really useful because there's some, there's some writers that I really like um, who, who's kind of um, take on AI. So Peter Hamilton has this great sort of take on, on AI. You know, you, you have these true, general true sort of art, sort of general artificial intelligences which go through what you know what's what's described in sort of the literature as a as an, a, um, a singularity moment where because the thing with these the these systems the fear is that we're going to create something which just goes oh i can redesign my own my own architecture to become exponentially more intelligent and it, it can because it can iterate at the speed of computation um you know, something just becomes wildly um, more powerful in the blink of an eye. So I think what will happen is we will have, you know, we will have restricted intelligences mm. kind of doing specific tasks. And so that's already happening to a certain extent, but, you know, res um, restricted general intelligence, you know, is possibly something, but, you know, is that something that we can do and should be doing ethically if, if, if these, if, if we as, as humans manage to create a, you know, effectively a synthetic, consciousness you know would you then put it in a box and tell it to do a job forever and hope it doesn't go mad and kill you but you know <laughs> like, yeah yeah uh, so but that that's like that's like my with, with my sort of with my super speculative hat on i think what we're going to see in the, in the short term is, is these tools becoming much more sort of woven into everyday life you know i i know that tech has reached an adoption point where my mother is interested in using it and when and um mum is mum uses it for writing complaints letters and <laughs> something which is like oh i wrote a complaint letter to the council and it took me five minutes it's like <laughs> it's like whereas before she had labored over it for hours she said it did a better job than me there was a faint sense of annoyance but also satisfaction that she didn't have to do the job so yeah. you know, and also if there. she's got something to complain about the fact that it would yeah. take her a week to do shouldn't stop her being able to have her voice heard so i think yeah. it's a really empowering yeah. yes. piece of tech in that way i like that it levels the playing field for those of us who find those kind of things really tricky it does um, and I, I think go on no no I, was, I just i think that the quest the question will be about how how regulation sort of um yeah comes comes to bear on this and and whether or not governments sort of do do crack down on it um and i think the reality is 
we, you know, you're, I don't know if you've seen the uh, the nightmare fuel that is the um, uh, that um, Amazon's humanoid robots that it's looking to replace all its warehouse staff with, um, and they're saying, oh, we'll have these things on the street in you know in in, in sort of eighteen months' time, and they'll be. The, the, I, I I really genuinely believe we will be seeing humanoid delivery robots on the streets within, and and that's like that is like me. My yeah. mind well, our it. local co-op has has a has a troop of robots that deliver. We've got those little delivery robots in our really? area. Really, are they the little, little wheels? Yeah, yes. with the little. Yeah. They're hilarious though because yeah. they they're like they're incredibly polite. So if <laughs> they take twenty minutes to cross the road because if there's any sniff of a car or another pedestrian, they wait for everyone else. So, but yeah, we quite often get a delivery from the robot, and you can. You can tell it what music you want it to play when you open the box. But the last one we got, when it arrived, it was empty. And that was because the human error, the human yeah. had loaded it and couldn't get the lid shut. So went back in the shop to get help. And in the meantime, the robot set off to our house. So got to our house and there was no shopping. Oh, no. <laughs> so, you know, it's again, it's only as good as the human yeah. operators yeah. programming it, telling it what to do. But, yeah, we have those little... Um, yeah delivery robots i, I freaking love them i think they're amazing I think, they're so yeah, cheap. I, mean, it, I think it's it's the um um it, it's it's those we're at a point where we can start to see that it's gonna you know what i love is that it's freeing up my time me too and i think what's what what is gonna sort of possibly get a little scary is when large companies start to realize that freeing up time means not having to employ large quantities of people and so yeah. i think um I think that's that's poss that's that's going that for me is going to be the place where a lot of prob if if you're looking for places where there's risk I think that's where there's a lot of risk actually because you're going to start to see um and in Milton Keynes they've got a self-driving bus oh my god Milton Keynes has always been a modern city yes it? and it's also you know it's it's almost ideally laid out for from a from a town planning point of view for yeah that. exactly it's not like I mean, of, it's very you can have that in Plymouth because it would have, you know, it was just probably drive into the sea or some, something. Yeah, like we that. have too many potholes and yeah. like yeah. like uncovered mine shafts in Yorkshire for that to be yeah. <laughs> um, We are the guinea pigs for it all. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I think this is the thing to bear in mind. Yeah. But I, like you, you see, I'm like there's there's things like Lisa saying, could it can I can it write my EHCP appeal paperwork for me? If you know what to ask it, yeah. then yes basically yes if you need help putting together a document like whatever kind of document it is if you tell it where to get the information and you know what questions to ask it it can pretty much do whatever you need it to yeah and um you know i don't consider that in any way a disadvantage or a bad thing you've no. got to you know, use it ethically haven't you but um, yeah I, I think that's it isn't it you know you're 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 developing tools to support what you're doing and you know the, the reality is it makes it more accessible because it, it it's kind of it's making something it's making it's putting a a, a a a process that was i imagine incredibly labor intensive yeah. and time consuming um to turning it but it, it is essentially it's a data di it's a data driven thing there are yeah. there are ways there are ways to look at it you know and you like, yeah, like when helen says can you take emotion out of a ranch reply yes it can yes and that yeah. is powerful. You know, yeah. that's like the difference between being heard and not being heard when you're a parent sending an email and you need to tell someone to do their bloody job, you know. But yeah, I think it, like you said, it's it's data dependent and it's operator dependent. So you've got to, I think the more you use it, the more confident you feel with that's it. That's exactly what I was going to say. I think this this is what you, you, you need to start. Just, pl just play with it and play with it with a sense of curiosity and, and acceptance that it's not going to be, you know, at first it's not going to do the jobs that you quite need it to. So um it, it's it's as much about sort of it's about learning a new language almost yeah communicating with with somebody that has an incredibly large amount of um something I, I i slip into talking about it as a humanizing as a, it yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's like having a really efficient very autistic um uh, 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 personal assistant it will do exactly what you ask it to do. Yeah. And so you have to be really clear in your instruction. But again, I think this is when neurodivergent parents and parents of neurodivergent kids have an advantage because we know how to do that. 
<laughs> so we're ahead of the curve on instructing AI how to do things because we know how to speak in very clear language because that's what we do in our houses. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like you're going to show us something. What are you showing us? Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, I would. I, I was, thought you were pulling something up to show me. Well, well, no, I, I, I was, but th so I was going to share a link. So there's a really great sketch that I keep sharing with people. Uh, it's it's from it's called bronze. It's a sketch called Bronze Orientation, which basically because I've been having a lot of Chantel last week had um, a bit of a set to with with somebody who kind of um, did not like the idea that we were talking about this AI stuff because you know. Um, uh, it, because it sort of it was unfair to artists and she was like well it's you know we've been very we've been very respectful of that and mindful of of this and and and, and we are at a stage and this this sketch is you know it's a good it's a good sketch but it is kind of around this idea of the theater you know, it's bronze orientation day and there's a couple of stone workers who kind of uh are complaining about the fact they're feeling left behind and <laughs> and uh, you know and and the bronze one of the guys jobs is to stick the uh the flint arrow head to a stick and the other guy is to make the stick and the, the end of the sketch the flint arrow the the, the the arrow sticker goes so my job's all right and he goes yes he's like yes nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and there are some but and the other guy is just the, the, the awful truth is is that there are going to be some jobs that are lost as a result of this shift. But then that has been the case with every technology. Every shift. advance yes. ever. Yes. Right back as far as fax the industrial makers, revolution. Yeah. yeah. If you were a company that made faxes, although weirdly, there are people, large, I haven't realized this, large, large quantities of businesses still use fax, which is just blows my mind. But um, I, because I, I was talking, I was using the, this as an example at home um, with, the, with the kids. I was trying to explain I was trying to explain. I don't know why, why I was trying to explain faxes to them, but they were like, "What?" <laughs> they do it. But the fax has become obsolete with, as a result of, of email, effectively. But we're going through another. You know, we, we are going to see people, unfortunately, lose lose jobs, and that's. I just... think the other thing as well is like it's that it, it's it's like you know, the invention of the motor car. You know, yeah. we don't ride, ride ride around on horses anymore, but some people do still ride horses. Yes, you yes. know, it's just. It, it, I think that the, the issue around creative control and intellectual property is something that will definitely have to be unpicked. And there'll probably be some big legal cases around yes. it for sure. Yeah. But like, who, who was I talking to? They were saying, you can tell when AI is being used for creative things. Yes. You know, like simple things like, you know, if you are using AI to write emails, go through and change all the Zs to Ss. Otherwise, yeah. it will be very clear that it was yeah. written by a piece of American-based software. Um, but also, like, you don't want to be using it to at the cost of your own voice yeah you know exactly. you want to be using it to enhance your messaging your communication whatever it is that you're doing not to replace you yeah. and in, in the same way you don't want to replace anyone else and like I, I was looking at yesterday a submission for um a book uh a, a, like neurodivergent stop, short stories and it was really interesting because it said we will not take any ai assisted materials yeah so like the, the 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 industries the creative industries will self-regulate as well yeah. you know we'll find ways to make it okay and yeah. we'll find ways because ultimately people do want that human connection yeah. you can tell when something is ai generated yeah. and which is why you have to go back and check over it and make sure it doesn't feel and look like that because that yeah. you know that's not what we're trying but i do think that like what you said and chantelle said you either get behind it and get on it or you get left behind yeah and for something like this, why would you not use a tool that helps you? Yeah. And, you know, no smashing spinning jennies is really exhausting. I don't, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to be one of those. I don't want to be sort of making myself. I don't want to be making life more complicated than it is if, 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 if new technology has come along. But I, I mean, I guess that's also part of the person I am. I've, I've always enjoyed new technology and I've always enjoyed the, 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 the leveling effect that it can have because I've always known, you know, whilst, whilst my, <coughs> whilst my diagnosis was late in life, I've always felt, you know, I've always felt that sort of that need to find those, those shortcuts to allow me to sort of stay, stay in the game and to you know, compete, so. you know, to, to participate, to not feel alien, to not yeah. be isolated, yeah. you know, to not be invisible and unheard and yeah. 
not represented. Smashing Spinning Jellies needs to be the name of your prog rock band. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah so I, I'm, I'm kind guessing of... guessing you'd be the bassist, yes, yeah, Tom, is that right? <laughs> um, so my music, I've got a ukulele. Of course you have. <laughs> and uh, and a crumb horn. But, What's um, that? I, I don't know where it is. My room is, is an episode. It, <laughs> If you uh, so, if you really want to listen to one of the world's most unpleasant instruments, just go to YouTube and search for Crumhorn. C R U M H. Yeah, C R U M H O R N. It's a it's a it's it's a sort of medieval instrument which sounds like a horrible kazoo. Can you play the Crumhorn and the ukulele at the same time? No, that would be that would that would be a good party trick if I could do that. That's something to work on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> One man band of ukulele and crumhorn. Yeah. No, I, I'm a bit of an early music fan. So, um, and and unsurprisingly, a huge nerd. Um, so, uh, <laughs> That's how we get on. Try yeah. Get on. <laughs> so, so, if people want to come and find you, I know that you and Chantel, like, yes. you're working on stuff to help yeah. people at the minute. And I know this has happened super quick, right? Because you, like, both geeked out over it. And then you were like, Yes. oh we can help other people geek out over it yeah. and you're kind of people can, can come and find you i'll make sure that they know where to find you but you're going to have stuff coming out aren't you to help more people get to grips with ai yes um, yeah do you so, know what that's going to look like yeah do you know what kind of things you're going to have for people well we've so we we've got so we've got the mastermind which is which is which is focused on a, a more of a business world sort of view but we've been having discussions about how we can have a sort of much more um, everyday focus on it as well. And that might, that might end up being a bit more of a membership because I think it's kind of, you know, the sort of, the, there is, there is a way of working there that we haven't quite unpicked yet yeah. um, because it's, because there are, there are sort of everyday, there are everyday hacks that I want to get into people's brains because they, <coughs> they make life a lot easier, but um but I also think the mastermind, although it is for people who own businesses predominantly, mm. like for those of us who are doing like the day-to-day -day admin of running a neurodivergent house, yes. that's a business. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. So, so there is yeah. there is that side of things as well. So if 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 I guess the question you would you would ask yourself is like, is is making is making more? So the question I ask myself is is making more time in my week important to me? And I always say, yes, it is. I reckon, yeah. I reckon I've freed up 10 hours a week of my business, given myself 10 hours a week back 100%. doing. And like doing... Chantel said, it's not it's not like freeing up time so you can charge more money for doing less work. Yeah. It's freeing up time on the stuff that would take you unnecessarily large amounts of time yes. so that you can really use your chat talents and your skills yes. to do the things that other people can't do more of, yes. you know? So, because I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours trying to pick through stuff that if right. I just knew where to find it, I could find it. You know, that's the difference it makes for me. Like, with some, I know if someone says to me, there's a piece of legislation that says this, isn't there? And I'm like, yes, there is. And it's in the Senn Code of Practice, but I cannot remember where. Mm -hmm. I can go to Claude and I can say, where is this in the Senn Code of Practice? And it will find yeah. it for me in moments. Yeah. Like, and yeah. and then you can sort of ask for for sort of any other information surrounding that within the context of that document as well. So you can, <coughs> it's just it gives us a depth of analysis at our fingertips that that that, that, that would like, like I say would have taken hours. And this is yeah. this is a big this is a big part of it all. And it's definitely a level playing. When when I've got I've got a, a seven day intensive coming out in February for families who want to really like deep dive and get everything they need to know about the HCPs and the whole process in a week. Yeah. And that a lot of that is AI assisted in terms of I've written the program using AI and I've yeah. made some AI assisted tools. Now they're not AI led mm. tools, but they're AI assisted tools so that I can give everyone on that program something that I could not normally yeah. have previously done because of the time it would have taken me. So yeah. yeah, just being able to do that is a real gift, I think. So so we will make sure that people can come yeah. and find you because and i'm sure we'll have you back to talk about more things yes but um yeah thanks Tom. Uh, anytime anytime very happy yeah and um, and uh yeah i will make sure that people know where to find you and uh, i am now going to go and take my Perfect. son climbing because that's what i Whee, need to do that sounds fun yay okay all right 
lovely thanks for joining us everyone let us know if you've got questions um thank you and i will make sure that tom yeah gets them. find them all at me yeah, yeah. okay yeah. all right bye Happy. everyone bye, -bye.